Edit. Welcome back here to the What's Cooking program, the nation's food, wine, restaurant, and travel show, talking about the big eating championship hot dog wise at Coney Island. Also in the news today, they have the Royal Jam. Have you heard about this? This is the weirdest story you're going to hear today. It's jam made from Princess Di's hair is on oh. sale at an art exhibit. Yes, that's correct. Jam made from what its maker claims is one of Princess Di's hairs huh. is up for sale at an art exhibition in London. It's uh, The preserve is called Occult Jam. And it's part of the Surrealist Art Show at London's uh, Barbican Art Gallery that includes exhibits by Salvador Dali and others. It's a five-pound uh, a jar, $7.60 jam. It's both food and uh, it's art and food, they're saying. It's a guy from a catering company, Bompas and Parr. This guy said Sam Bompas is from that group. He said the preserve is made by infusing a tiny speck of the late Princess of Wales hair with gin, which is then combined with milk and sugar to create a product with a taste resembling condensed milk. That is like the grossest story you're going to hear today. And that being said, let's bring on Steve Evans, ladies and gentlemen, Steve the movie guy with the Weekend Report, who was also at our hot dog uh, taste test. And uh, you picked the Nathans in a losing uh, manner, did you not, Steve Evans? Well, yes, I did, as a matter of fact, because uh, what I, you know, I, it's just a matter of taste. Now, I'm not saying that I'm the one that's supposed to be you know, saying uh, which is best for everyone, but for me, the Nathan's was less salty, and you know, the, you know, the uh, you know Hebrew National was just a saltier dog. So I went with the less salty dog, and the more pleasing taste that would be the Nathan's dog. But Paul Stern overwhelmingly loved the Hebrew National, did he not? Well, no, I believe he changed his mind. No, no, no. What I'm saying, when he first voted, he overwhelmingly, when he found out... I think... You can change your mind like a Democrat once you find out no, the no, results. No. So when you're just voting... I think he was confused. I think no, was, no, he was not confused. I was tricked. You live stick together. No, I was tricked into you believing... You were not tricked. Everybody the just voted. Was, was, was the Nathan. How were you tricked? I think tricked? it was a hanging chat is what I think it was. How were you tricked when someone says, how many like this dog, and they raise their hands, and you, and you were commenting prior to that, oh, this one is the greatest. This is the greatest. And when you found out that uh, the Hebrew National was not what you thought was the Nathan's, look at the look on your face. <laughs> so yeah, that same look on your face. That's great. Well, I, you know, even, I even chose the Nathan's dog after I had had a hamburger, a hot dog, the, the, uh, the yeah, Hebrew you were dis- National. You know, the, the Nathan's was my third dog. You were disqualified because you were like <laughs> food OD'd. <laughs> you were just, but I still chose you, the Nathan's. It's just a matter of, I'm like I'm saying, I'm not the one that's going to stand up and say everybody should eat Nathan's. No, it's a matter of personal. Thank taste. you. Okay, so, but uh, the, I'm telling you, the contest uh, results are final. They are sealed by the great Herb Shaw, who was there <laughs> overseeing everything. And uh, overwhelmingly, the uh, Hebrew National did defeat Nathan's. I hate to say it, but that no, is. It was the, not overwhelming. It was overwhelming. Paul it was, was the swing vote. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was like five to three. The you only of- had three feeble votes. You. And Herb Shaw, <laughs> I would actually leave the party if I agreed with Herb. It wasn't a fair contest because the Nathan that you chose to compete against the Hebrew National was an, a less expensive Nathan. Uh, Paul, I have sound bites just like you have of you just raving about how great this particular hot dog was. You overwhelmingly <laughs> raved. You're talking about you like the casings on the keys. You were just raving about how to look at the look well, on your face. It wasn't an original Nathan. That's there's all I'm saying. There's only one way to settle this, and that is to have another taste oh, test. Oh, no. A we're not having a Florida test. recount. No, no, there is no, no a Florida recount. Test when we'll blindfold the contestants and we'll feed them a hot dog. They will not know what it is, and that way they will. it will be a blind taste test, and no, nobody will know, and it will be the perfect. Possibly I'll see you in another life, brother. It will be. It will As be the Desmond would say, I'm lost. That's it. It's, it's over. I'm telling you, it's done. And even Dave Petty, who cheated and actually put condiments on his second hot dog after eating the first one plain, and he goes, oh, this one's better. Yeah, there's mustard and there's relish and there's ketchup on there. I think, well, no, no condiments, just the dog. Apparently Herb Blind Shaw was sleeping when that indiscretion went on. If you really had any faith in your, in your, uh, in your taste at all, you, would, you, would, you wouldn't uh, be uh, objecting to that. I'm going mean, to leave it up to the great Eric Hines and Jack Roberts. I'm going to do the taste test on these two food experts who host our number one of the What's Cooking show, and we will have them, you will see, overwhelmingly, they will go for the Hebrew National. Just face it. All right, all right, I'm just saying. Do you guys have anything against 
Hebrew National? Uh, no, no. I mean, it, uh, I, Steve, I'm hearing that there must be some kind of a problem. No, it's no problem. Uh, apparently, there you don't no like problem. Hebrew National. I, don't I love them. Well, that's fine. I think I, I think I'm proud for you, but I just it's a matter of personal taste. I just went for the Nathans. Okay. Okay. So we saw a great movie yesterday. In a, in a losing battle, you went for the Nathans. Yes, we did. It was an excellent film. Night and Day is a great film. It Steve is. Evans I think it's one that's been overlooked this summer. Yeah, I think so. I think this is the sleeper film of the summer. It's Steve the movie guy. How is it doing at the box office? Well, it's done about forty-five million so far. It really hasn't performed like they had like you know that that like they'd hoped it would perform, and I don't know why that is. You have two great movie stars, Cameron Diaz and Tom Cruise. I think they're at the top of their game. I have never seen Cameron Diaz more adorable. Tom Cruise is like off the chart uh, action guy, and the thing moves a mile a minute. Of course, it's over the top, totally implausible. But it's a fun ride, and yeah. it was just a, a great time. And I just and, and the theater was full. Yeah, it was full. And I, you've got this. Uh, there's a the, some kind of a blood sucking movie out right now, or something, isn't there? Like a well, vampire the film. Well, Eclipse, yes, oh. did very well over the weekend. As a matter of fact, it made 161.7 million dollars in five days, Michael. But that's about three or four million less than the original Twilight movie, right? No, no, no. This is far above. Oh, it is? Yeah. There's somebody this saying is, it, was, it was less than the first one. Well, the original Twilight movie didn't do nearly this well. Uh, hmm. this, is, this, has been, this has been, well, so far, anyway. I mean, it's only been out for five days. It will do even better than the original Twilight or New Moon. It's just going to blow the doors off. We did very well overseas as well. Well, there'll be a, a remake of Frankenstein, the Frankenstein monster. I would suppose uh, if they think there's any money in it, yes, there will be. Okay, good. That was things. So. What else? What else happened? Well, Twilight was great. Twilight did very well last weekend. Uh, then we had the last Airbender, not doing quite what they had hoped, but if that still made about 53.2. Of course, it's a long weekend. We're looking at four and five days here. Is that a uh, 3D movie? Uh, the last Airbender is a 3D movie that didn't start out being a 3D movie, but they bumped it to 3D. So, I'm, I'm told that uh, perhaps it's not as good as it could be. What's that, that about, The Last Airbender? Beg your pardon? What is the movie about? Well, it's about The Last Airbender. Oh. <laughs> if, you, if you really must know, it is uh, about uh, the air, the water, the earth, the fire, the four nations tied by destiny oh. when the fire nation launches a brutal war against the others. Fire, water, you know, it's, earth, and air, right? Is that about it? all that. Yeah. And, uh, and mayhem ensues, I might add. Is it based on that old TV series I was on? I don't believe so. But the number one movie of the summer so far... Iron Man 2. It's made about $308 million. Steve Evans, ladies and gentlemen. Steve, the movie guy. And also, in a losing battle, not a hot dog decider. We'll be continue straight ahead. Stay with us on CRN.